coming up very soon. Pauline Hanson, we're going to talk about youth crime, voice, paying rent, all sorts of things. And, uh, yes, a courageous woman, whether you like her or dislike her, she is courageous, morally courageous. All right, uh, let's talk to this man who knows all about the history of Ipswich. And little did they know, down at Tolmore Place at the moment, is a big dinosaur display. Yep, but animatronics. Bet- they move. It- yeah. And you won't believe it. Apparently, there have been dinosaurs discovered in Ipswich long before anywhere else. Exactly. Let's talk to Harold the H. Ark, Ark, Ark. Peacock. About this. How are you, Harold? A fantastic Danny. Dinosaurs today, so I'm pleased I'm talking to you. Oh, I uh, just, well, I'm a dinosaur. They've taken over Tomwell Place. That's the whole of Ipswich they're in right now. Yeah. But uh, people have forgotten about them. They were first found right here almost a century ago. Tell us all about it. Yes, look, the dinosaur trackways, you know, the famous ones, they're the Dinosaur Stampede National Monument at Mark Quarry that's, you know, it's southwest of Winton in the outback. Yeah, yeah. They were formed 95 million years ago. The original interpretation was they were a stampede triggered by a Tyrannosaurus. Yeah. Uh, and that supposed event became the inspiration behind the best scene in the film Jurassic Park. Oh. But the Lark, Lark Quarry trackways were found when half the hillside was removed in the late 1970s. Mm. But Ipswich's own dinosaur stampede was, was discovered here around 40 years earlier than what? Mark Quarry. Where is it? And yet, not, a, not enough people know about them today. So where? I'll tell you about that, where, where it is now. Yeah. Because it all started in 1933. That's more than 40 years before oh. the famous stampede wow. out west. Yeah, that's when the state government's chief geologist, his name was Lionel Ball, mm. he went to the Lanefield Quarry, which is about two and a half miles west of Rosewood Railway Station. Right. And he was shown some remarkable things. Uh, See, miners in the Lanefield mine had discovered on the roof of the coal seam that they were mining the footprints of dinosaurs. Mm. Now, this is in 1933. Now, Mr. Ball was the first to describe them in anything like a scientific manner. Mm. See, the prints that were around 50 centimetres long and said to resemble what would have been made in mud by a giant domestic chicken. That's what they said <laughs> at the time. <laughs> now, now, the footprints had, in fact, been made by a pteropod dinosaur around 100 million years earlier. Mm. They had walked directly on swampy coal forming vegetable matter, mm-hmm. leaving the impressions that were later filled by muddy sediment that turned to shale. Oh. That meant millions of years later, when the Ipswich underground miners removed the coal seam from underneath, mm-hmm. the release of the footprints were exposed in the shale overhead. Wow. And that's what Mr. Ball was showing. We're looking at one now. now. Is that from... Hey. That's from Ipswich. Yes. You can actually see that's here right. the, the miners taking the roof uh, down. To reveal the footprints. Well, how interesting. Keep going. This is very interesting. Yeah, now, plaster casts were taken of the prints by a university geologist. One of them was Dr. Fred Whitehouse, who was actually born right here in Ipswich and went to school here. Wow. And Dr. Whitehouse was notable for later leading 800 Boy Scouts on a hike across Fraser Island in 1951. Mm. An infectious disease broke out and they all had to be quarantined. Rations were running low. And Dr. Whitehouse saved them by ensuring the boys used their scouting skills to live off the land. <laughs> but back to the dinosaurs. You see, these footprints, they were the very first evidence of dinosaurs ever found anywhere in coal deposits. Mm. So there was great scientific interest. More dinosaur tracks were found in the decades that followed. For example, in the 1940s and 50s at the Walloon coal measures and at the Balgowan mine on the Darling Downs. Mm. These footprints were even larger than Lanefield and included Australia's biggest carnivorous dinosaur footprint ever found, which was 79 centimetres long. It's huge. It's thicker the size of the animal. Now, the Lanefield tracks, however, they were made by a medium-sized predatory dinosaur that would have been around two metres high at the hip and up to eight metres long, which is still pretty big. Oh, I'd take it front now, on, front on tackle. Yeah. Yeah, now all the tracks, Danny, were found in sediments directly above coal seams on the ceilings of the underground mines. Mm. Now that style, as many of our listeners know, that style of mining stopped more than a quarter of a century ago Mm. and the mines backfilled and closed. Mm. So that means if such as incredible dinosaur discoveries can never be seen again or put on show like those like Quarry, they're buried, gone or removed. 
and it can only be studied by the plaster casts and photographs taken at the time. But this is where the problem lies. You see, the Queensland Museum has plaster casts of the dinosaur footprints from Balloon, but none from the first discoveries at Lanefield. They can't be found. That means those very first dinosaur, dinosaur tracks found right here in Ipswich, they were made 100 million years ago, but took only 90 years to be lost again. So, Danny, enjoy the dinosaurs at Tomal Place. They're a genuine piece of Ipswich history. The things that you find out, and you do research very, very, you know... Well. You, well. Well, well. Deep, deep. <laughs> and we've got to tell the council we need a book. You've got all the stories, the Ipswich history. Let's spend some money and then sell that book and that money goes into homelessness or something. Because, you know, seriously, th- th- who'd ever think... Well, Ipswich is a very old place, so I suppose there would have been a few dinos running around here somewhere. But uh, what a great story, mate. But even older than you think. The whole place, you know, that whole area is a swamp with dinosaurs running across uh, the landscape 100 million years ago, uh, and it's underneath our feet. But Mm. we're never going to see them again because they're buried and gone. Very sad. Mate, how do we find out about this story and other stories? Because there's a lot of reading on your Facebook page. There is. Go to go online to historyoutthere.com. And next week, I'll actually be calling you, Danny, from Western Melbourne, where I'll be searching for more forgotten history. But go to historyoutthere.com. Historyoutthere.com.